Welcome to Flash Video Basics Part 4. Today we're going to start building our scrubber. And I started in Sorrents and Squeeze here because this is an important thing you need to do when encoding your FLV files in order to get your scrubber to work properly. So I'm going to go into one of these FLV presets. And if you haven't used Sorrents and Squeeze before, this is the screen where you set up all your options for encoding. Um, you can choose uh, your codec, um, the data rate, frame size, and frame rate. I have it set to one to one, which basically will match the frame rate of the video file you're importing. But the main thing we need to focus on is the keyframes, because when you're using the NetStream object to seek ahead in your video, it's looking for the nearest keyframe. So it's important to encode your FLVs with a high number of keyframes. So uh, encoding at 60, if your uh, video file is at 30 frames per second, would be a keyframe every two seconds. I like to keep it every uh, one keyframe every second. So now we can go over to Flash and start building a scrubber. Okay, here we are in Flash, and last time we made our, our loader bar here that shows the progress of our download, and now we're going to start making our scrubber. So the first thing I want to do is double click on that loader movie clip and I'm gonna to want to come in a little closer on this okay and I'm gonna go up to my layers and create a new layer and I'm just gonna call it scrub and I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool and with no stroke and I'll just keep it dark gray I'm just going to come in and just draw a thin line, thin rectangle here. Okay. And now I'm going to grab my text tool. I'm just going to hit T to get the text tool. And I'm going to go back to that Wingdings 3 font that I use all the time. And I'm just going to hit the letter P to give me that up arrow. And I'm just going to move that into place. Just nudge it up a little bit. Okay, something like that. Okay, so this is going to be my little scrubber handle here. So I want to select all of that and turn it into a movie clip. So I'm going to hit F8. And I want my registration point in the center so that the center of the movie clip will be at the zero position. I'm going to call it scrub. Okay, now I need to give this an instance name. And again, I'm just going to call it scrub. Okay, so now I want to zoom in here, and I want to place this thing um, at the start of where I want it to start at, which is basically the zero coordinate right there. And that's it. I can just come back out to the root timeline. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom back out here, and we have our loader movie clip with our scrub movie clip nested inside. So now we can start our action script. So I'm going to highlight that first keyframe of the Actions layer and open the Actions panel. Okay, so the last time we created this interval, which calls this video status function 10 times a second. And we're going to use this again for our scrubber and our progress bar. So the first thing we need to do is to find out the duration of our video in seconds. So I'm going to create a variable, just call it duration and it's going to be a number data type. Okay, so to get the duration we're going to be using an undocumented event of the NetStream called on metadata. Uh, I don't know why it wasn't, uh, why it's not documented, why it isn't really supported, but we need to use this bracket syntax here um, when we call it. Because if we were to try to call it using the regular dot syntax, uh, Flash would give us an error saying that, you know, as far as it's concerned, the NetStream doesn't have an on metadata event handler, but it does. So, go figure. So, we're just going to set it equal to a function, and the on metadata actually sends an information object, uh, you know, when it fires the event, and in that object is a duration property. So we need to catch it here. Uh, with a variable. Okay, so now I'm going to set the duration variable that we just created above equal to the duration property of that information object. And that's all there is to it. 
the on metadata will only work if you've created your FLV with uh, an application that uses Flash Video Exporter 1.1 or greater. So if you're using an old uh, tool to create your FLVs, you may have to uh, hard code that value in here. Okay, so now we can go back to our video status function where last time uh, we calculated and updated our load bar. And it's going to be very similar this time to uh, update the position of our scrubber or our playhead. So I'm just going to say loader.scrub, which is the movie clip we created earlier. And I'm going to be setting the X property to move it along the X axis. So now I'm going to be using a property of the net stream called time, which basically returns to us the current position of the playhead in seconds. So I'm going to divide that by the total number of seconds in our video which we've calculated already and stored in the duration variable. And this will return a percentage in decimal form much like this one above. So when we take that and we multiply it by the total width of our load bar, which is 208.9, uh, it's going to update the playhead and put it just at the right position. Okay, so this is very similar to what we did last time in that we calculated the percentage of one thing and used that to set the value of something else. And that's a very common theme here. So let's test the movie. And here you see our white loader bar here is adjusting itself based on the amount of FLV loaded. And our playhead now is moving based on how far we are ahead in the stream. So next time we're going to actually make this clickable and draggable so that you can dynamically jump to different parts of the stream. So Scrubber Bar Part 2 is next.